Hello friends, it's me, Self-Critical Automaton, and today we're going to go fight a boss. So, I'm going to jump right into episode I don't remember. I've committed to not remembering. See what you like about him, he is actually pretty heroic. We make a lot of fun of Luca, but his instinct is to protect a child from harm. This is the moment at which a little dial in his head swings from not a clue to gets it. So, as far as I know, this is the only boss fight that starts with an ordinary fight. Um, I don't know if it actually counts for your score at the end of the level at all, but it can be useful to, you know, uh, try and grab an angel weapon before you go fight the actual boss. But, um, yeah, so it's nice to see that Luca, when you think about it, actually is a decent sort. Like, he's got this weird obsession with, uh, you know, thinking Bayonetta killed his family, but, or just his dad. But, you know, um, all things considered, he's alright. Like, his instinct is to is, her is fundamentally heroic. Uh, it's not his fault that he's a total fucking weenus about things. Uh, can I...? Okay, come on, buddy. So, you may also have noticed that Cereza is slowly becoming more confident as we go. This will become... this will be relevant in, like, several chapters' time. Spider-Man. I like that we see his instinct and then his and then like the reality of the situation dawns on him. It's also nice to see that the cartoonishness is applied evenly to all the humanoid characters. The the realistically rendered adult humans get Looney Tunes constantly. Well, not constantly, but sometimes. Like, he is full-on willing to risk his own death to protect some random kid he doesn't even know. Maybe we stand one man. Hang on, is that the lollipop that Cereza was literally just using? She stole candy from a baby. I mean, it is pretty easy. Well, Hitty, what do you think we should do? He's hurt you, has he? Well, we can't be having that now, can we? So I thought for sure that the the toy cat's eye was going to turn out to have been the the other eye of the overworld all along. I could not have been more wrong. But 
Is it just me? Because it seemed super obvious that that was where that was going to go, and then it just absolutely didn't. Let's rock, baby. I have a fair amount to say about this boss, but the first thing I'm going to say is that it's honestly not very fun to fight. Um, it's kind of more frustrating and more stressing to fight than any of the other ones. Not only because it's got these really quick attacks that are really difficult to dodge, um, and those attacks don't grant witch time, no matter how carefully you dodge them, as far as I can tell. There's only one of its attacks that actually grants witch time. Um, but in addition to that, there's uh, the camera swings around constantly throughout this entire uh, stage, especially in certain sections. And uh, when it does that, it's re just really possible to get keep your dodge timing because... I mean, everything's flailing around wildly and you can't see what you're doing. Um, in addition, the actual, like, combat of it is mostly just, like, trying to dodge these tentacles and um, doing as much damage as you can during that. And most of the time, the way you do your damage is going to be by just holding down the shoot button the entire time. So it's hold one button while trying to dodge the game. And that's honestly not super fun to me. Um... It also introduces another new element that you'll probably see in a minute, which is that, unlike the previous bosses, if you get knocked off and fall down, you don't just uh, automatically come back up again. You end up... Uh, you have to time it right and actually press a button, so... That is a complexity that I don't mind being added, but it is frustrating on top of all of the other problems, uh, the other additional difficulties. One might argue that I just need to get good, but... Um, I mean, that's probably fair. Like, if you want to tell me that, uh, by all means do so. So, it's very important not to step in that suspicious white milky fluid, because it will stick you and then you'll get hit. Um, I've got a good track record of saying don't do this thing and then just immediately doing that thing. But, yeah, it's not a fun boss to fight. I do have a couple points about his design, though. I think that it's... Um, well, first off, the uh, crystalline rays shooting out from him are a really nice touch. They're a very clear visual reference to the um, to one of the ways that, like, the power of God or divine glory or the the light of heaven is depicted in, um, you know, medieval portrait art. Well, not portrait, but like religious um, depictions from I think pre-Renaissance um, and especially in um, icon art of uh, Catholic icons. So, it's, um, honestly, it's just a really pretty effect, and it's really nice to see it brought into, into 3D. So, I hope you don't have motion sickness. I'm going to try and remember to put a, a content warning on this one for motion sickness, because, frankly, this is just, like, I never get motion sickness from games, and yet, when I'm fighting this guy, um, just in these particular sections, oof, it's bad. If I punched God so hard in... In the f you ever been punched so hard in the face that your tongue fell out? Also, I love this inexplicable kind of... Like, everything else she does is so over the top and excessive, and yet this is just this weird anime, like, karate knife hand chop nonsense. So, he has he essentially has three hit points, um, or three phases. So after the, each of the tentacles you cut off, he starts smashing all of the things. And, you know, like the previous bosses, he is very obliging by having these things for me to stand on. Uh, the second point I had about him is that I wonder if um, his design was actually inspired by classical depictions of the cherubim. Of course, in-game, the cherubs are the, uh, are the beloveds and braves who are... I'm just going to use a healing item because I'm low on hit points, and honestly, I'm so bad at dodging this boss. Even in my, uh, even in my practice run, even in my in my casual playthrough, I don't think I've ever got higher than a silver on this boss, just because he's so difficult to dodge. That thrust attack there is the only attack that you can score witch time on, and it lets you, you know, just wail on his face for a bit, which is very useful. Oh, also he spits out minions that start to hit you with tentacles, which seems to be his one deal. Aha! Got it! So, yeah, I'm wondering if he is, in fact, referential to uh, the classical depictions of the cherubim, who are, of course, one of the one of the higher orders of angels, and because the cherubim have um, 
Their bodies are completely hidden by their wings, and they have four heads, the head of a man, the head of a lion, the head of an ox, and the head of an eagle, representing the four dominions of life, essentially. Uh, humanity, domesticated animals, wild beasts, and birds, who respect neither god or man, naturally. Um, as anyone who's ever met a bird will know. So, <laughs> it is a lovely day in the village and you are a horrible deity. Um, yeah, what was I saying? So yeah, I don't know if that's intentionally referential to that, but a cluster of faces, um, out of which the, you know, glory of the Lord shines. And I know I'm not Christian, but you know, classical Christianity speaks in that particular way, so it just feels natural when I'm when I'm recording these to speak like that. Um, so this should be the final tentacle now. Um, final tentacle. That's a fun phrase to say. Oh, he's going to smash it. Yeah, there we go. It is interesting to me that every um, every boss so far has had this mechanic of um, fighting on platforms and periodically falling down and climbing back up again. Um, I'm not really sure what dictates whether or not he smashes, um, which is another fun phrase to, th to say or think about. Uh, it's important to smash those eggs before they hatch, because if they hatch, then they uh, hit you with tentacles, which you don't need when you're already trying to dodge two different kinds of attacks that are already happening at the same time. Um, but yeah, the final thing I wanted to mention was that... Um, so I had a look at the game's achievements list the other day, uh, after recording last episode, actually, and it turns out that there actually is uh, an elemental theming uh, going on with these four... Um, uh, these four bosses. It turns out that each one of them is associated with an element specifically, and it is the ones you would expect. This is Earth, um, you know, traditionally associating uh, plants with Earth is pretty common in modern uh, fantasy. Oh, here we go, I think this is the end of him. So, basically, um, the first boss is fire, because dragons are associated with fire in the modern day. Even though, classically speaking, dragons aren't associated with fire. Fire-breathing dragons are very rare in folklore. Dragons much, much more frequently breathe out poison or disease, uh, which makes sense because they are metaphors for natural calamities. Um, so it makes sense that well, any natural calamity brings, you know, disease and despair. So it makes sense that... Oh, wow, I'm just screwing all of this up, huh? Uh, it makes sense that dragons that would be would have poison breath, you know, because they breathe out a thalamus. Um, and my asthma theory's been believed was believed for a very long period of time, so it all fits. Um, however, there are seven actual virtues, of which four are the cardinal virtues. So I feel like they were stretching a little bit to define their uh, four cardinal virtues for the for the game, if that was their theming. But yeah, we've had uh, fire, air. Now, Earth, so next up's going to be water. That's a remarkably American propaganda look, I've got to say. Swap the hair out for a uh, Stars and Stripes bikini, and uh, you have a poster that I am pretty sure I've seen on, like, bedroom walls in America. In on TV. Like, I've never been to America. I don't like that. How about now, Kitty? Still not enough, you say. You can go another round, can't you? Your soul, your goal, causes or has Lunchi, Lunchi, Laia, Pila. The Lumen Sage. Ulsa, Kalasa, Ua Una Kala, Ulprit Arbor. That's probably the creepiest of the bosses, I think. Now, where are my new best friends? I suppose one of them is an adult, so they should be okay. Eh. Luca might be alright, but he has man-child energy. That's gonna be a silver from me. 
I can't believe I didn't get a better combo score. Like, I'll take the damage, sure. So, as usual, this is a boss, so it'll be a pretty quick episode. I'm actually really looking forward to the next boss, because I, I think his design might be my favourite out of all of the bosses in the game, which I will probably talk about at length when I fight him. But, uh, for now, I'm just going to try and score some points, because points are the important thing. Oof, 28, that's not even enough for the least item. So, it's at about this point in the game that it really amps up its absurdity curve. Um, everything starts uh, everything starts just exponentially getting more and more um, absurd, more and more extreme. It doubled us, doubles down on everything and makes everything... The stakes massively go up, is what I'm saying. Um, and it really, really starts to to go at an incredible rate. It's um, It's got real tempo, the final chapters of this game. But that's going to be all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.